The Dances of Katya, Music Making in the Belly Dance World in Detroit, Michigan, by Katya Ferris. Raksat Katya is a compilation of 14 tracks made for Rock Sharky, or traditional Arabic belly dance, and highlights the Arab American musicians of Detroit. The aim of the CD is to present the authentic Arab music that is played in the largest Arab American community in North America. This CD includes classics from legendary artists of the Arab world, such as Abdel Halim Hafez and Farid Al Atrash, as well as an original Khaliji composition mini tabla drum solos, and taksims, or solo melodic improvisations. Some of the instruments used are oud, guitar, kanun, saxophone, accordion, and violin, as well as full Arabic and Khaliji percussion. A portion of the proceeds for the sales of some of the tracks will be donated to humanitarian relief charities in the Middle East. Damascus Blues to the Syrian Refugee Crisis, Johar to the Iraqi crisis, and Raksa Shams to the Palestinian Children's Relief Fund. Musicians who performed on the album are Nader Harb, Roger Cashew, Ons Bukra, Kamal Karim, Nasser Haddad, Imad Ibrahim, John Hammonds, Basil Ahmed, Elias Kilsey, and Sayer Danden. Iraqi percussion has been recorded by world-famous drummer Anmar Al Mokhtar. Accordion track has been recorded by Arab pop singer Imad Batea. Ney and Ms. Mar recorded by National Arab Orchestra director Michael Ibrahim. I am a belly dance artist of American descent, both European and Native American backgrounds, but I fell in love with the music from the Middle East as a child when my sister moved to Iran. I then learned the differences between Arab, Turkish, and Persian music and dance, and decided to pursue more knowledge in academia, and as a professional dancer. As a dance scholar with a master's degree in ethnomusicology, I am first a musician who grew up in my church's choir, so I wanted to learn straight from the diaspora communities of the Middle East. This passion for music and dance of the Arab world has led to form, forming a strong friendship with my music producer, Nader Harb, who then invited several members of the Arab music community of Detroit into the project. The result is a rich tapestry of traditional instruments displaying the culture of their ancestors, but has a contemporary vibe that will appeal to many people. Cover designed by Jimmy Shaba. The CD is available on 18 online music stars, including Amazon, Apple, YouTube, Google, and Spotify. Special thanks. I'd like to dedicate the CD to the families of the musicians that made this CD possible. If I hadn't had their support, I would not have been invited into their homes to work with them. Thank you for all of the long nights of recording, the wonderful Arabic food you made for me, the hookah, and of course the love that went into making this music possible. Shukran Jazilan. This is also my gift back to the women and all of the brides that I've danced for. Thank you for allowing me to bless you for your journey into this new chapter of your life. Also a special thanks to my Egyptian dance mentor, Ihab Gadala. He helped us to do some final editing and his contribution was essential to this recording. Performance studies. In performance studies, all the world's a stage and what happens off stage affects what happens on stage. This includes cultural and historical contextualization and an ability to reflexively index the material that has gone on in previous performances to determine if a performance meets the standards or not. Communitas is a term coined by cultural anthropologist Victor Turner and is the ultimate goal of Arab music and dance performances, just as in other cultures. People experience a state of liminality in rites of passage rituals, or a sense of being in limbo, not of the world and life they just left and not in the new one they are just about to emerge into. A sense of community is made when individuals bond in these experiences. Why did I decide to produce a CD in Detroit? 
I learned about the beauty of live music and the recording process after performing to live music and working with musicians from Salam in the beginning of my career. I have been using recorded CDs and love all of the new music coming out, and so I wanted so I was inspired to create my ideal oriental dance set. For oriental dancers, it is essential to understand the music because you are a silent member of the orchestra. You make the music 3D. Think of your body as an instrument for the sounds you hear. I have found that musicians are the best teachers for advanced dancers because they give you the most freedom to express yourself. Dance teachers want you to follow them in class, but musicians want you to follow the music and come up with your own style. Therefore, I decided to do my research on Arab music for belly dancers in Detroit because it is the largest Arab American community in North America with Dearborn as the center. I also had discussed making a drum solo with Tony Bahu in 2010 and Natter was to be the producer. I performed at a wedding with Imad Batea and Natter in 2014 and we had so much fun that we decided to do a whole CD together instead of just one drum solo. Here's a clip from that wedding that we did. It was in Terre Haute, Indiana. The Detroit Arab Music Scene The Arab music in Detroit is the best in the country and has the largest volume of singers. The audiences that I performed for were mainly Lebanese, Iraqi Muslim and Chaldean, who are Roman Catholics, Syrian, Jordanian, and Palestinian. Both Christians and Muslims are represented about equally, although the Lebanese Christians have been there the longest of the Arab diaspora communities, following the violent conflicts in the 1960s. There is a pocket of Syrians in the area of Gross Point on Lake St. Clair on the east side of Detroit that came over in the late 1800s, but they have acculturated themselves into the fabric of American culture more so than the recent immigrants. There is a new Yemeni population on the south side of the city, but I had no contact with them whatsoever. They seem to be much more conservative and do not seem to participate in the nightclub scene that I experienced. There have been more recent Egyptian immigrants, but there is not a large Egyptian population in Detroit. The musical influences, therefore, are not Egyptian, but have a Lebanese and Iraqi background that influences the music in the clubs. These are the musicians that played on my CD, as well as some members of the National Arab Orchestra. Music functions as a way to remember their culture through rites of passage ceremonies, such as weddings, baptisms, and First Communion celebrations. Nightclubs serve as platforms to play at in between religious celebrations. The importance of the singer in this Detroit community cannot be emphasized enough. There are many singers there, but only a handful meet the classical aesthetic for Arab music. Belly dance is just not that important. There was much more belly dancing in the clubs in the 70s through the 90s. The way it pans out in the nightclubs is that the singer wants as much time on stage for their show as possible, so they don't want to give up time for the belly dancer. <clears throat> the guests at the club or party also want to dance more, and so they don't want to give up their dance floor time to the belly dancer, too. 
Therefore, because of this phenomenon and the recent wave of conservatism in the Middle Eastern communities, belly dance is less in demand. It is my experience, and it is customary for the bride and the mother of the bride or groom to hire the belly dancer for their weddings. There are lots of Depka troops there, with mostly men and a few women, and it is common in Detroit to hire them for celebrations. Some American women participate for the Oriental dance portion if it is requested. I did a show with Syrian singer Shadi Ranjos and Leilina Zaffa in 2016. This recent trend towards conservatism also means that singers do not want to be associated with belly dancers as much anymore either. Music therapy. Music is not just a way to connect to their heritage, but it also acts as a community therapy session for those suffering from the post-traumatic disorders of war. PTSD is a big problem in the Arab American community, and a Syrian doctor has coined a new term for the distress of the Syrian refugees, because PTSD does not encompass their experience. It is the human devastation syndrome. Music serves as a healing medicine for the collective and the individual, as the current and historical events have displaced many families, and the healing ultimately takes place with individuals. The dance that we all love is the dance of the wives and the families, not the dance of the professionals who own the nightclubs and run the dance studios, after all. The Muses of My Inspiration A few of the music muses of my inspiration for Roxat Katya were the belly dance LPs of the 1970s, where one whole side was an entire belly dance set, and also the rock and roll concept albums that marked that era that were similar in format. We named it Roxat Katya because following the tradition of rock and roll albums, the first release of an artist should be self-titled. Stardust is one of the names of the tracks. It is an Oud Taksim by Nader Harb. My inspiration for this name come, came from the original song, Stardust, by Hoagy Carmichael. He released his song in 1927, which was written while he went to my alma mater, Indiana University, in Bloomington, Indiana. The song quickly became an American standard and gave me the idea to tie in American music tropes with Arab music, as Hoagy used classic Arab poetic themes and structures in his lyrics that reflect the Sufi themes of the lover and the beloved and the union and the separation. The seven part routine. Side one is my ideal classical belly dance set, tracks one through six. It is my personal opinion that the structure and flow of this style of routine are meant for healing. As sacred Sufi music has influenced classical Arab music, I believe that Sufi dance has also influenced the secular oriental dance. I plan on expanding on these ideas about sound, frequency, and how it affects the human body in Rock Sharky for a future presentation. 
Track 7 is the final drum solo and also has the finale for the full dance set. So it is tracks 1 through 7. Side 2 is a variety of songs that contain Johar, an original Iraqi Khaliji song written for me, and a variety of drum solos, contemporary renditions of traditional classics, and Taksim melodic solo improvisations. These are songs that you can exchange in the seven-part routine if you want to mix it up. The Musicians. I quickly realized once we got into the studio that this CD wasn't about me at all. It was about the musicians. They were so excited to be a part of this project and so kind to me that I knew it was my job to show them off to the world and help them to shine. Let me introduce them to you. Nader Harb is the producer of the CD and is a Palestinian-American musician who was born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. He began his music career as a teenager and first played Arab oud and guitar in a band with drummer Tony Bahu in the 1990s. He now plays keyboards for the Jordanian-American superstar vocalist Imad Batea. Nader is the owner and producer of Moda FM, a music recording studio in Canton, Michigan where he records all genres of music, such as Arabic, rock, and jazz. He will be releasing his first solo Oud CD soon. Roger Cashew is a Palestinian-American percussionist and the cousin of Nader. He has been playing percussion with the National Arab Orchestra for the past seven years. Roger is one of the mixers of the CD and did all the final mixings of three songs before being released. Ons Bukra is a leading percussionist from Tunisia. He has been active in the Detroit Arab music scene since the 1990s. Ons's style is classic Arab, and as a Tunisian who doesn't perform Tunisian music all of the time, he can adapt his style accordingly, and because of this flexibility, he has been in high demand with famous musicians from all over the Middle East. Kamal Karim is an Iraqi saxophonist who plays a jazzy kind of Arab style. He travels regularly all over the globe for his art and frequently goes to Russia to play for belly dance competitions. Nasser Haddad is a Jordanian percussionist who came to this country over 30 years ago. He has been a regular fixture in the Detroit Arab music scene and has been my drummer at the Prestige Club for several shows. He loves to play for belly dancers and has been involved with drumming for dancers for most of his career. Imad Ibrahim is an Egyptian-American violinist who plays for the National Arab Orchestra. Imad is the only Egyptian musician featured on the CD. John Hammonds is an American bassist who sometimes plays for the National Arab Orchestra. Basil Ahmed is an Iraqi guitarist and bassist who came over from Iraq just a few years ago. He plays an Arab style of guitar and bass and has played with many famous musicians in Iraq. Elias Kilsey is a Syrian musician who resides in Florida. He's the only musician on the CD who is not living in Detroit now. He plays Kanoon on the CD and is an accomplished musician who has done many recordings of his own. Sa'ir Danden is a Palestinian percussionist who was the winner of drumming competitions in Palestine before immigrating to America recently. Anmar al-Mukhtar is a famous, world-famous Iraqi percussionist who has his BFA in music studies from the University of Baghdad. He is a scholar of Iraqi music and is involved with many cultural groups promoting the heritage of his homeland. Imad Batea is a Jordanian-American who was born and raised in Detroit and is now a superstar singer in the Arab music world. He is also an accomplished musician in every aspect of Arab music. He first started playing keyboards as a child prodigy, but also learned drumming. He's now known for his vocals, which show a precise enunciation of Arabic and an attention to detail that is the sign of high musical art. Imad plays accordion on the CD. Maestro Michael Ibrahim is an accomplished Lebanese-American musician who was born and raised in Detroit and is now a classical musician and music scholar in both Western and Arab genres of music. He's the founder and director of the National Arab Orchestra. He is an accomplished musician in many areas, 
but Ney and Mizmar are his specialties, which he plays on this CD. Michael holds a MFA in Music Conducting from Wayne State University. Music Making in the Belly Dance World and Copyright Law I'd first like to define the terms music making and belly dance world. What I am terming music making is the entire process of how music is recorded and published. This process includes events that happen outside of the studio that influence the recording as well. I define the process as starting from the moment of the CD's conception to the moment of its birth on the date of its release. I define the belly dance world as the subculture of belly dance that includes professionals and hobbyists who would be interested in using this music for oriental dance practice or performance. Through whose lens is this music seen and made? I didn't pick the songs as I wanted my producer to love the music he was playing. I let him choose, then we decided together on the final choice. He has to be inspired to produce. I can't force him to make anything. I can suggest, but ultimately it is his choice. All of the musicians were chosen by Natter too. As he knows all of the musicians, he knows who would work best for each part. I didn't design the CD cover either. I had chosen a different picture, but Natter didn't like it, so I had to pick one that we both liked. Gender also affects the outcome of the recording. In a male-dominated society, the men have the final word on all things in the public sphere. The CD is in that public sphere, so I let Natter take the lead. It was kind of like ballroom dance. The man leads and the woman follows, but she does have a choice to stop dancing. He and I worked very well together, so it was a fun and easy process. So fun, in fact, that I have decided to switch my focus from performing dance to producing dance music. We are beginning to work on a new CD of live music. Intangible Heritage and Intellectual Property Many questions surround the belly dance world and its music, such as, who owns what and what is intangible heritage? And is it fair? And who has the right to portray a culture? So how does the music industry work today? These are very large questions and we don't have the time today to discuss them all at length, but I ask you these questions so that you will think about them yourselves and come to your own conclusions. Many independent musicians are producing their own music and publish online through CD Baby, SoundCloud, or TuneCore, which is what we used. This means more power in the hands of the artists, but still not as much revenue. Do we need these music publishers? I believe we do, because with music pirating, the artist is not only left without revenue, but their work has been stolen. That is a theft of the heart, as it takes months to make a recording, if not years. These online publishers are able to hire the lawyers to defend independent musicians that they themselves may not be able to hire. So in the end, I think it is a good idea. Cultural appropriation, being a responsible dancer. Cultural appropriation is the adoption or use of the elements of one culture by members of another culture. Cultural appropriation, often framed as cultural misappropriation, is sometimes portrayed as harmful and is claimed to be a violation of the collective intellectual property rights of the originating culture. It is important to note that the neoconservatives in the Arab world do not see rock sharky as coming from their culture at all. They see it completely as a product of colonialism. They live in a segregated, segregated society, so by exclusion, the men are kept ignorant of the true female Arab heritage. I wanted to give back to the culture that the art is from. It has been important to me, especially with current events. Since my sister moved to Iran when I was 14 and I have had Iranians as my family, I see the suffering of the people seeking political asylum in this country. I feel it is my duty as an artist of their culture to do my best to truthfully represent them and not to distort their culture and degrade it into Orientalism even if members of their own culture are guilty of this. Professor of Literature Dr. Edward Said coined the term Orientalism to mean the negative patronizing stereotypes of Eastern cultures that are portrayed in the Western media. Learning more about the people that make the music that you dance to is a natural byproduct of working with them. You cannot help but fall in love with them and their stories and want to be an ally to the cause 
of showing that Arab culture is a vast and rich tapestry of art. Once I realized all that it took to make the music that I used for my art, I came away with a great gratitude for them and their families, and I hope that this is what you will take away from this presentation. Now I'd like to tell you a little bit about each track and play about a minute or so of each for you to get a feel of it. Below are a list of questions I asked Natter in an interview about each track and his response. Tracks one through seven are the seven part routine, so keep that in mind. The recording process took two years and I sat in on several sessions. He used Pro Tools HD to make the CD, and each track was recorded separately, which meant that none of the musicians were playing together at the same time. Al Toba was written by Mohammed Abdel Wahab, who is Egypt's most famous composer, and it was originally sung by Abdel Halim Hafez, who is a protege of Wahab. It means never again or the warning. Track two is Al Rabia, which is by Farid Al Atrash. He was a famous singer uh, who was also involved with a famous belly dancer, Samia Gamal, and together they did many Egyptian films. This song starts out with a violin taksim, and then it goes into the melody. And uh, I want to read just a few of the lyrics for you just to get a feel of what it's about. The spring. The spring returned again, and the light of the full moon appeared. But where is my love who threw me out from love's heaven into its hell? O oh, time, bring me back those happy days and take my life. That one which I took care threw me out, passed and occupied my mind. The breeze was like a song sung by the Nile, and its beautiful waters is inviting us to party on the river. The calm wave and the moonlight were like the lute and its chords. It chatters to the roses and confides secrets to the night, and its melody intoxicates us. Me and the lute, there is not one like us. To whom are you smiling your days and your nights, O oh summer? I had in your season a companion who made me a promise in front of you. Since that I would have in his heart a vision that vibrates among your dreams. Since the day he has abandoned me and left, the laments of the nightingales have become louder, and the rose has got the color of the wounds. And after that, the autumn passed and withered the passion just as the flowers. Arabia. <laughs>
Damascus Blues is a Kanun Taksim by Elias Kilsey. It's important to note that the Kanun is the historical leader of the Arabic ensemble, or the small ensemble, which is called a takt. And the reason is that, uh, well, Kanun means law. And so the strings are so perfectly tuned, can be so perfectly tuned, that the rest of the band can tune their instruments to the kanun. So it's the law maker, I guess. Um, so today the leader of the orchestra is, or the band rather, a small ensemble, is the oud player, which is an interesting shift. So here is Damascus Blues. <laughs> Heaven by Kamal Karim. This is a kind of jazzy saxophone baladi taksim. Uh, taksim means improvisation, and the baladi taksim always has either accordion or saxophone as the main melody instrument. And then about halfway through, the rhythm instruments come in and it becomes rhythmic. Um, and then it may even end in a drum solo. Not always, though, it's up to the musician's discretion. So here is Ballady Heaven. <laughs> Is, track five is Ya'ain Mulayatin, and it was originally an Iraqi Bedouin song, and it became popular uh, by Jabar, Jabar Akar. And then in the 1960s, Lebanese singer Samir Taufik brought it out again and made it popular. It is a Debka. And so the main uh, rhythm it's using is the katakufti, which is the main depka rhythm. There are different ones, but this is one of the main ones. Uh, and this song in the 60s introduced the tabal, which is the large frame drum that's um, held around the neck and then played with two mallets.
Track six is Katya's tabla solo and the set finale. So this tabla solo is by Ons Pukra, and we were in the studio together and he started recording and uh, I was really impressed by how much attention to detail he put into the recording process. Um, he's a very classic drummer and um, He's been working in Detroit since the early 90s, I think. So he's very well uh, experienced. So here is my drum solo. <laughs> Track 7 is Johar, which means jewel in Arabic. This is an original composition written for me by Nader Harb. I had originally wanted a maison scene, or an entrance piece, written for me, as is typical for most belly dancers that have music made for them. This melody came to Nader, however, and he wrote it down and played it for me, and we both fell in love with it. We decided to make this my special composition, and I love how it turned out. This is considered an Iraqi Khaliji piece because the rhythm instruments that are used are Iraqi and the rhythm is as well. piece, I wanted to talk about the rhythm instruments that are used. This is a list of them, and this is Anmar Al-Mukhtar, who is the Iraqi percussionist that worked with me on this. This is a video of him playing the kasura, also called the kashba which is the very small goblet-shaped drum. It has a very small head and a very high pitch. It's very distinctly Iraqi sounding. Bye. 
Anmar describes this rhythm as shabi, which just means the people in Arabic. So I am assuming that this basic, this is the basic rhythm for southern Iraq around Basra. This is the question I asked him, and they said yes, pretty much. Basically, um, you know, shabi is also a term we use for Egyptian, an Egyptian genre of pop music that's from Cairo. So. It just means the people, and if it's used, it means it's what's generally used from the region that those people are from. Um, and then as you can also see from this video, he's not a, in a sound booth. All of the recording for the CD was done in this room, just like this. Track eight is Kanzaman, which means days of old, and it's by Nasser Haddad. Nasser Haddad has been a fixture in the Detroit music scene Oh gosh, since I think the 70s, uh, maybe late 70s, early 80s. Um, he is a more Egyptian style traditional drummer. And what makes him special is that he can play uh, an abstract tarja style, which means translator. So he's basically translating the words to the tabla. And here is Kansaman. Track nine is Starlight by Basil Ahmed. He's an Iraqi musician, and he's not been in this country for very long, so his style is, you know, it's very fresh. I mean, he hasn't, um, hasn't been too westernized, although he does love jazz, and he did study it a lot in Iraq, so I found that interesting, uh, and country music as well, um, that he loved our music and studied it over there, and now that he's here, he's teaching us his, so it's a nice exchange. Um, Guitar was introduced into Oriental dance music in the 1970s by Omar Khorshid. He's the pioneer, and he played in a lot of Arab bands in the 70s, and uh, he was either Greek or Lebanese. And so what Basil is bringing to this guitar taksim, or improvisation, is, is a little bit jazzy. So here's Basil. <laughs> Track 10 is Raksa Shams, which means sun dance. It's by Sahir Dandan. And Sahir uh, is also a recent immigrant, and so his style is also very fresh and hasn't been um, changed too much by being over here. Um, it's, he, since he's from Palestine, it's more of a Palestinian style, but it's very close to Egyptian. Um, and Nader said, you know, don't think about the borders in the area, think about it as one region. So there was a lot of ex cultural exchange of information. 
Uh, and before uh, Saer left, he was in a contest and he won an award. He was the best of 50. So here is Raksa Shams. Track 11 is Lama Bada Yatathana, When She Begins to Sway. This is a famous Andalusian Muashahat song, uh, originally from Granada, Spain. Uh, but it's important to note that when the Abbasid dynasty was kicked out of Damascus, Syria, they brought not just themselves and their family, but their whole entire royal court with them. So they set up a similar royal court that was in Syria in Granada, Spain, and so this why this is why the Andalusian music um, is coming from the Syrian Muashahat genre. This particular rhythm in this one is a uh, samai, which is a tin eight, and this track has a live drummer. And it's not a drum machine, so uh, pay attention to um, the different rhythm instruments that are playing as well. Track 12 is Hands of Time, which is a drum solo by Roger Cashew. This is the only single tabla solo on the CD, which means there's only one drum. There's no complimentary drum. There's no drum machine or anything backing him up. This was all done in one take. It was not stopped at any point in the recording, unlike my um, Katya's tabla solo, which was stopped several times and edited and uh, very detail-oriented. This one was done in one take, and it was all improvisation. And um, Roger has been a member of the National Arab Orchestra for the past few years, and his dad used to be a drummer and uh, initially taught him. So here's Hands of Time.
track 13 is Stardust, which is in Oud Taksim by Nader Harb. This style is very similar to Farid Alatrash, and this particular style goes with the singing styles called Mihana and Ataba, which are styles of Mawal or sung poetry. Track 14 is called Layla Wa Majnoon, or Layla and Her Crazy Lover. This is a drum solo with an accordion taksim in the middle, and then it goes back into a drum solo. So it's not a traditional ballad taksim. And I asked Natter to describe this, you know, what they were doing, and he said they're just basically jamming. So this is just a jam session, basically. Um, I called it this because it's after the uh, the legend of Layla and Majnun, whose real name is Ches, Q-A-I-S, and he was her lover and he followed her and her family all over the desert and her father had to move camp every time to keep her away from him. And he could be here, heard at night uh, crying for her, saying, Layla, Layla, Layla. And so now there is a subgenre of Mawal called uh, Layali that is it's based on um, saying, oh, night, oh, my night, over and over in an improvisational style. So this is similar to that. And it's also, um, to me, it sounded like um, Layla is, the, is the, the rhythm, the drumming, and then Majnoon is the... Uh, the accordion coming in chasing her so it's a fun song it's really fun to practice too here's Layla Wa Majnoon <laughs> My conclusion is hire your musicians if you're a dancer. Make some music, make art, and help the communities that gave us this beautiful art form. Shukran Jazilan, which means thanks a lot in Arabic, to all of the people that took part in this project and to all of my beautiful dancers that have been helping me to put this beautiful music to movement and to present it to audiences everywhere. I have some limited edition CDs that are for sale. Um, these are versions of the tracks that are not online. I will also be teaching technique and choreography classes from the music on the CD in my new online studio on powhow.com. And also for workshops if you're interested in how I dance to my music. 
Also, I will have some hard copies of the online version available on my new website coming up. Thanks a lot.